What does the Bible say about snakes? Are snakes evil? Snakes, or serpents, get plenty of attention in the Bible, which mentions them over 80 times. Snakes show up in Pharaoh's court, Exodus chapter 7 verse 12, in the wilderness, Numbers chapter 21 verse 7, on the island of Malta, Acts chapter 28 verse 3, and, of course, in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. For each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Serpents. Tannin. Serpent. Dragon. Sea monster. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord, that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Nachash Serpent When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Serpent Nachash They are almost always pictured as loathsome creatures, associated with poison and craftiness. As amoral creatures, snakes are not evil, in themselves, but they are a handy metaphor for evil in many passages. It started in the garden. The serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. In some way, the serpent was used by Satan to lie to Eve and lead her into disobedience. Adam soon followed. As God was meting out punishments, he cursed the snake, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Genesis chapter 3 verse 14. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock. And above all beasts of the field, on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat. All the days of your life. Serpent. Nachash. Every time we see a snake slithering, limbless, on the ground, we have a reminder of the fall of man and the effects of sin. Ever since Satan spoke his lies through the serpent to Eve, the snake has been associated with sin. The prophets liken the wicked to those who hatch vipers' eggs, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 5, to a serpent, who has swallowed us. And then has spewed us out, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 34, and to those who will lick dust like a snake, Micah chapter 7 verse 17. They hatch adders' eggs, they weave the spider's web, he who eats their eggs dies, and from one that is crushed a viper is hatched. Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon has devoured me, he has crushed me, he has made me an empty vessel, he has swallowed me like a monster, he has filled his stomach with my delicacies. He has rinsed me out. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, like the crawling things of the earth, they shall come trembling out of their strongholds, they shall turn in dread to the Lord our God. And they shall be in fear of you. The poetic books speak of evil men making their tongues as sharp as a serpent's, the poison of vipers is on their lips, Psalm chapter 140 verse 3, of liars having venom. Like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be, Psalm chapter 58 verses 4 to 5, and of alcohol eventually biting, like a snake and poison, ing, like a viper, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 32. They make their tongue sharp as a serpent's, and under their lips is the venom of asps. Serpent. Nachash.
They have venom like the venom of a serpent, like the deaf adder that stops its ear. So that it does not hear the voice of charmers, or of the cunning enchanter. Serpent. Nachash. In the end it bites like a serpent, and stings like an adder. Serpent. Nachash. Jesus and John the Baptist both condemned the hypocrisy of the Pharisees by calling them a brood of vipers and snakes Matthew chapter 3 verse 7, 12, 34, 23, 33. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You brood of vipers! How can you speak good, when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? The snake, as a symbol of Satan, has wound its way around the human heart and filled us with its poison. Try as we might, we cannot rid ourselves of its influence. As the wicked King Macbeth discovered, serpents are hard to kill, we have scotched the snake, not killed it. Macbeth, 3, e. In fact, by the time we get to the Book of Revelation, the serpent in the garden has become a raging dragon bent on world domination. Following a battle in heaven, the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. We need help in our battle against the ancient serpent. Fortunately, from the very beginning, God has promised us a savior, speaking to the serpent in the garden, God says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the Protoevangelium, or first gospel. God promised that the seed of the woman would crush the serpent's head, a prophecy that the virgin-born Son of God would win a decisive victory over the power of the devil. Jesus said that he had come to save us all from the serpent's bite, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him, John chapter 3 verses 14 to 15, cf. Numbers chapter 21 verses 6 to 9. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord, that he take away the serpents. Serpents. Nachash. Serpents. Nachash. The Lord Jesus is our serpent crusher. He is our dragon slayer. And one day, when he establishes his kingdom on this earth, all of creation will be restored to its original, harmless state, snakes included. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, Isaiah chapter 11 verses 8 to 9. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy. In all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea.